welcome to more coverage of the Audi R8 LMS Cup from the Korea International Circuit. And Sean, this is the fourth time that the Cup has been to this particular track. A fantastic venue, a favourite of the Cup over recent years. And of course, that memorable race last year between Alessio Picarillo and Alex Jung that set up a championship that went all the way down to the wire. Well, before we get into all the weekend's racing, let's take a look at the local region. Well, we're very happy to be joined at the panel by Frankie Chung. And Frankie, by your high standards, a bit of a disappointing year last year, but you came right back to form with a victory at Suzuki Japan. What was the difference? Thank you very much. It's a great feeling to be back in a competitive level. I did a lot of work in the pre-season to make sure that I could bring the confidence back. Having a two strong teammates, so we can all share very useful data. And this is, I think, helped me a lot. Let's go back to Suzuka where we were last month with the Cup for the very first time and we had that great start with Alessio Picarillo off pole defending from Mitch Gilbert into turn one and of course drama down at the uh, chicane with Martin Rump and KOU. This was Sean Thong moving his way past the reigning champion and Alex Jung didn't have the greatest of runs. Of course he raced here twice during his Formula One career and whilst Alessio Picarillo was moving further away from the field with every lap, Alex Jung was battling with Marchi Lee and then it all went wrong at 1.30R. Went around once, around twice, nobody expected to see that and that really did bring his championship unstuck. Meanwhile, his 2016 rival Alessio Piccarello crossed the line for win number two, Mitch Gilbert second, and Frankie, you had the lead off the start for race two. It was a very ideal start and uh, I kept everything clean and uh, it was so much easier when you are in the front and uh, you could control the pace and uh, you, you see the, the middle pack, it's very easy to have incident, uh, like uh, very bad luck to Alex. It was a good race and uh, behind you Alessio certainly put an awful lot of pressure on you to, uh, to do what he could but of course he took the success ballast too and, and that slowed him down just a little bit but did you have any real doubts anywhere during the race that you were going to be under pressure? Um, to be honest I, I knew that uh, Alessio is a very fast, a very talented driver and uh, not so stupid and uh, I was more controlling my, my own race and uh, I keep the quite healthy distance to Alessio and uh, bring the car to the first place back home is a great feeling. You look pretty happy there, Frankie. Yeah, since my last win, it's been too long, so it's nice to enjoy it. Despite that win from you there, it's still a pretty significant lead at the top of the standings for Alessio Picariello, 31 points. The question we've been asking is, can anyone stop him? Annoyingly, he's 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 pretty good. He's right up there. You know, I've had some I've had some good teammates over the years. You know, guys they've gone on to racing F1, DCM, and all that. And I think he's one of the guys. He's, he's right up there. Alessio is just I think better than anyone anyone on the grid. He suddenly has a little bit of an advantage. He's just figured out how to drive the tire a bit better. The thing with Alessio in whatever car we put him, he's straight away on the pace. Last year he got close. He was playing it a bit safe, and I think this year he's just going all out. At the moment, uh, Alessio still remains the most competitive driver uh, in the field, but in a way, the top eight drivers in the cup is a very, very high standard. Any mistakes would really cost you a lot of positions. He's had a good beginning of the season. First two events have uh, gone great for him, but it's nearly halfway now. You know, there's still a lot of racing to do. I want to see how he is. If he's got to start a little bit further back, that's where I'm hoping maybe he's going to struggle. Although I, I know that Alessio is, is very, very strong, but I still must believe myself. I think same to Alex, same to our other drivers. In a good day, we can beat anyone. It's just down to us to get on, get on top of it more. Everybody still wants to win, and uh, I don't think they've given up.
Korea International Circuit. Herman Tilke designed Formula One Circuit. 5.615 kilometres, 18 turns. It's a couple of passing opportunities. The run into turn one, of course, the long, long straight, one of the longest straights in Asia, down to turn three. Turn four, then you need to be pretty sharp if you're going to make a move and decisive move through the remainder of the lap. Through turns 18, onto the main straight, and there is a lap of the circuit. Starting positions for round five of the Audi R8 LMS Cup sees Martin Rump on pole position after he trumped his rivals with a late decision to change to wet weather tyres in slippery conditions in qualifying to take the top spot for the champion racing team. David Chen too made a good decision with the TSRT team. He will start alongside then as Alex Jung and Anthony Liu. Mitch Gilbert position number five from Jeffrey Lee, a great result for the reigning AM Cup champion. KOU and Alessio Piccarello, the points leader, will round out round four. Then it's Frankie Cheng, winner last time out at Suzuki. Zuka, alongside Stefan Rikelmi, Sean Thong well back in the field, Andrew Kim alongside subbing for Marchie Lee, and last of all, Burit Birambakti in the Singer Plan B car. Getting ready for a rolling start, Martin Rump, right of screen, controls the field, and they're away, that is the TSRT entry of David Chen, the green car left of screen, and the reigning champion, Alex Young, trying to split them on the run into turn one. He's just made up some positions there on to the front of the field, and behind him, the driver's being very careful. There's Alessio Piccarello, the points leader, going very, very wide on the exit, and even onto the grass on the exit of turn two, as they take that long run down to turn three. On board with the reigning points leader, Alessio Piccarello, that is Jeffrey Lee in the Audi Tide 1 entry, immediately ahead of him. You can see him trying to go wide on the outside, but very tight into turn one here at Korea International. You don't want to be too far on the outside there, and you're going to have to avoid contact. He's gone wide to make sure he does miss contact there, and it looks like he's been forced wide again, and that's put him down the grass. And Sean Thong has taken position up ahead of the points leader. Martin Rump down to turn three. A very racy reigning champion, Alex Jung, looking for position. Then it's Mitch Gilbert and Frankie Cheng. Oh, Stefan Rakomi into turn three. He's got very wide. It's slippery on the outfield here too. And that is Anthony Liu in the 37 entry, also going wide. Getting very tight here. KOU holding position. The South Korean at home is always fast here. And another South Korean, Andrew Kim. Subbing for Marchie Lee in the number five Audi Hong Kong entry, and we got more contact further down. That's David Chen at turn 10 trying to go up the inside of KOU, and that hasn't worked out well. It's still very slippery. Let's take a look as we go into turn 10 on board with Picarello. This is happening immediately in front of him. Just a little bit wet on the infield, and there was really no move there under brakes. Picarello now is going to try his luck going around the outside of KOU here, and he's got the position and the closing stages of this lap and takes it away. And that brings Frankie Cheng under the rear wing of the 13 car. Now he's going to try, but not around the outside of KU. You are not here, and that has sent Anthony Liu wide, trying to avoid them under brakes. He went in very deep. You can see the windscreen wipers on. There's a light drizzle on the circuit and on slick tyres. That makes conditions very, very tricky. And that's just caught out Rakelmi too, who spins in the Castrol entry. As now Frankie Cheng tries to go around the outside of KOU. And it's very tidy, they've made contact on the run through turn five, and that's not what the man who won last time round needs to be doing. Now he's spun on the exit. Frankie Chung has made a diabolical move there on the outside, and that's dropped him well down the order. Now further forward, the reigning champion's trying to get through on Martin Rumps. Looks like he might have done it in the drag race down to turn 11, the double left-hander, and he's come across to the apex. Looks like he's got the lead of this race, and certainly he has. Now this is the OD racing entry of Mitch Gilbert trying to take the position away at turn three. Still the windscreen wipers on. Let's go on board with Mitch. Has he pulled the move off? Yes, on the dive in. But can he hold it on the exit? Looks like he's managed to hold him out. The pole sitter is still struggling, missing two practice sessions due to an onboard fire in the first one. And then they had a lot of work to do to rebuild the loom. Now he's in more trouble on the exit of turn six. He's just gone wide, gathered it all up, back onto the grass. Let's go on board. This is what we call a tank slapper in the business. Full opposite lock left, then right, then tries to get it back together and manages to hold onto it and rejoin the circuit, but he's lost wholesale positions there. The last one to Alessio Piccarello. Now Birit Birambakti, he had his own dramas in qualifying, unable to record a time, he's back in this field. As Jeffrey Lee in the Audi Taiwan entry comes under fire from Andrew Kim, subbing this weekend for Marchie Lee. That's not what the Phoenix Racing Asia team wanted to see. Anthony Liu trying to go around the outside of KOU, but the local hero knows where to position his car, and he's doing everything he can to hold the Chinese driver behind him in that 37 absolute racing entry. Up front though, no such dramas for the reigning champion. Alex Young continues to lead the field. Mitch Gilbert, then Sean Thong, who's becoming more increasingly under fire from Piccarello. Piccarello closing in, this is the last lap. He's tried something down at turn three. Very nearly made contact with the rear of the number eight Audi T to racing entry of Sean Thong. Gathers it all back up again. The final corner for the reigning champion, Alex Young, victory number two for the season.
Across the line in second position, it'll be Mitch Gilbert, very closely followed by Sean Thong. Then Alessio Piccarello from eighth on the grid. But there he is, the reigning champion, number one again, 22nd victory in the cup for Alex Young. Yeah, no, it was really good. Um, as soon as we, we tried a couple of things setup-wise to try and move the car forward and straight away from the first lap in free practice one, I could tell the car was better. So I know, knew we had a good car. I knew once I got in front of Rumba, I could just pull away and that's what we did. The car was excellent. And I got a good good first corner and alongside uh, Anthony, I, I went across the grass. I thought it was going to be a huge crash, but uh, I managed to keep it going and um, I had a good race with Martin and Alex and, and once I passed Martin, yeah, Alex was um, a bit too strong. It's definitely one of the toughest race so far in the cup season for me because I started uh, P12 which is second last after really bad qualifying. So Alex Jung claims win number two for the 2017 Audi R8 LMS Cup here in South Korea. Mitch Gilbert crosses the line second for his fourth consecutive podium. Sean Thong was third ahead of points leader Alessio Piccarello then it was Martin Rump and Stefan Rakelmi. David Chen takes the maximum points for the AM Plus classification ahead of KOU. Anthony Liu second in AM Plus ahead of Frankie Cheng and Burit Birambakti who takes top points in the AM Cup. Andrew Kim and Jeffrey Lee round out the field. Well, Sean, the Chinese outfit, the Tianxia Racing Team, has joined the Cup new this season with young driver David Chen. What's impressed you about their performance so far this season? Very mature drive for this uh, emerging Chinese team, and they've really shown that they will be a powerhouse, I'm sure, in this part of the world over the coming seasons. Let's take a closer look. Overall, it's just a wonderful experience. We always uh, aspired the R8 Cup Series because it's more international, it's Asia. March Lee, Frankie Chen, they're probably most well-known uh, drivers in China. Uh, they were the very first group of Chinese that were able to compete in an international playing field for the racing. So we always uh, look up to them and, and uh, hope that we can be like them one day. So uh, to be able to come to this race and compete directly, I'm just so happy. Many of the Cup's drivers have also been racing with Audi in some other series across the region. Let's take a look at how they've been getting on. A number of the Cup's regular drivers have been racing in the Blancpain GT Series Asia during its maiden season, allowing them to keep their racing edge in between the Cup's race weekends. Marchi Lee and Sean Thong lie second in the outright Blancpain Championship, thanks to a win in Suzuka just days after competing there in the Cup. Mitch Gilbert has also notched a race win in the series. Alex Young secured pole position at home in Malaysia. Alessio Piccariello and Jeffrey Lee teamed up to secure a podium finish in Suzuka, while Martin Rump and Frankie Chung have also turned in some strong performances. Rump also made his debut in the China GT Championship, where he's done even better, winning the third race of the season, his first, while Marchi Lee has accrued two podium finishes so far from four starts. 
Meanwhile, in the TCR Asia Series, Sean Thong has been on the podium twice this season despite campaigning a limited program, while his younger brother Jasper, who also appeared in the Cup in the past, claimed a historic first ever victory for the new Audi RS3 LMS TCR in China. Tianxia Racing's David Chen has also competed in both TCR Asia and China GT, adding to his steep learning curve this season. With more laps raced around many of the same circuits in Asia, the drivers return to the Cup more experienced, more confident and more competitive than ever. Passionate fans on the grid for the eighth start of the Audi R8 LMS Cup in South Korea. All was said and done in the second qualifying session, which started on Sunday morning. Mitchell Gilbert broke his duck to take his first pole position by a mere four one hundredths of a second over Frankie Cheng. Then it was Alessio Piccarello and Sean Thong in row two. Martin Rump, Alex Jung, David Chen and Anthony Liu rounded out row four. Zafan Rikelmi, position number nine for the Castrol Racing Team, alongside KOU, Andrew Kim, Jeffrey Lee, and unfortunately for Burrit Birambakti, he would start rear field after failing to record a qualifying time. Standing start, right of screen, Frankie Cheng, left of screen, Mitch Gilbert, the pole sitter. He looks like he's got away quite quickly. Alessio Piccarello looming in the background. It goes to the left of screen, cuts back across, trying to make up position. Sean Thong, too, trying to move forward and takes the inside of the number one car that won yesterday's opening race. That is Anthony Liu further back, being squeezed wide. Rear of field, Burr Birambakti trying to make up for the disappointment of another technical issue during qualifying. Alessio Piccarello on board, you can see him trying to lock in behind Frankie Cheng, takes a look at the outside. Would he go around the outside? Not here at Career International Circuit. Takes a good position up the inside. You can see Mitch Gilbert's gone very, very wide. Now Alessio Piccarello up to position two. He pulls out of the slipstream of Frankie Cheng, pulls alongside the long drag race down to turn three, and he's done it. He's gone around the outside. He's going to pull across to the apex and hope he can hold it through to the exit of the corner. Now we're on board with Sean Thong. He's gone around the outside of the OD racing machine, and you can see that battle in front as we go through turn three on the exit. Piccarello's gone wide. That's allowed Frankie Cheng to pull alongside. It's a drag race on the short straight down to turn four. Martin Rump, two gone very wide on the exit. That's the Tian Chair racing team entry of David Chen still moving forward. The freight train on the run down to turn four. It's all going to come down to here. And Alessio Piccarello has managed to move across and take the position back from Frankie Cheng. He leads this race and holds out the man who won round four at Suzuka. Sean Thong back up the third position, taking Mitch Gilbert, the pole sitter, trying to do what he can to hang on to these three leaders. Further back, KOU is under fire from Stefan Riccolmi. Now, not going to go around the outside of KOU, defending hard on the exit of turn three. Oh, there's been more drama further back, and that is Burrit Birambakti. It looks like Jeffrey Lee, and so too Andrew Kim in the gold entry, subbing for Marchie Lee this weekend. Riccolmi trying the inside now of KOU. KO's got the outside here, but the inside for the next run. Can he hang on to it and keep the Castrol Racing Team entry out? Yes, he can. And you're not going to go and make a passing move there. And that's the sad side of Andrew Kim walking away from the number five Audi Hong Kong entry. No such problems for Alessio Piccarello, though. Big early lead over Frankie Chang, Sean Thong, and Mitch Gilbert hanging on to position four. Round five winner Alex Jung defending hard from Martin Rump, who had pole yesterday, but it's been a fairly challenging weekend for the champion racing team entry. Alessio Piccarello, so strong this year. This would be win number three. As still this battle goes on between KOU. That is Anthony Liu trying to go around the outside, and he's not going to pull it off there. KOU knows exactly where he needs to position his Audi career entry to protect on his home circuit, and he's done that. As further forward, Mitch Gilbert closes in once more on the tail of the Audi Tita racing entry of Sean Thong. They're not going to be able to do much about the leaders in front of them. Frankie Cheng getting away comfortably in second now. Alessio Piccarello extending his lead with every lap. Fastest man on circuit. As again, this battle for third place carries on with the laps winding down. Both these drivers searching for victory for the first time in season 2017. It hasn't quite happened yet as the last lap board comes out. Piccarello too far ahead of the field. Will it be Sean Thong for third? Will it be Mitch Gilbert? This is the final chance for the Malaysian to be on the podium. But at this stage, Sean Thong has him covered. Up front though, Alessio Piccarello has everybody covered as the MGT team by Absolute Audi comes across the line to take the chequered flag for the third time in season 2017 and extend his championship points lead. Good result for the FAWVW entry of Frankie Chung. Sean Thong across the line for third. Mitch Gilbert, Alex Jung and Martin Rump round out the top six. A signature move there from Alessio Piccarillo. Third time we've seen it this year. Here I really wanted to, to prove that 
we were there and uh, I knew the first lap was a key. Luckily, it was my teammate, so I knew they wouldn't crash me, but I still went for it. And yeah, it's, a win is always important. So it was a very clean race for me, and uh, I could make the work a little bit harder for Alessio, but he was too quick. Overall, it's uh, it's okay weekend, and uh, could have been better, but it was all down to luck. And the uh, next round in Shanghai. To finish two times on the podium this weekend, it's amazing, and I think I really uh, get lots of good points this weekend. So there he is, Alessio Picariello, on the top step of round six of the Audi R8 LMS Cup. And then alongside him, Frankie Cheng and Sean Thong. Mitch Gilbert is credited with fourth position ahead of reigning champion and yesterday's winner, Alex Jung. Martin Rump in position number six ahead of KOU. Anthony Liu crosses the line in position eight ahead of Stefan Rakelmi, David Chen and Burit Birambakti. And DNFs for Jeffrey Lee and Andrew Kim. And in the AM Plus classification, Anthony Liu is back on the top step and takes full points ahead of David Chen, whilst Burit Birambakti will take the top points in the AM class. Tough news for Alessio Picarillo's title rivals. He's actually extended his championship points lead in South Korea. 126 over Mitch Gilbert, 79. But very close between Frankie Cheng, Alex Jung, Sean Thong and Martin Rump further down the order. In the AM Plus classification, David Chen for TSRT has moved well into the lead on 89 points, whilst Burit Birambakti has taken a strong lead in the AM classification. Well, wins here in Korea, Sean, for Alex Jung and Alessio Picariello. What's been the highlights for you from this race weekend? Well, I think the ongoing performance of Alessio, but certainly Alex Jung, the uh, maturity and the experience that he showed in that first race in difficult conditions to walk away from the win was uh, very, very much a highlight for me. He is a three-time and reigning champion, but Alessio Picariello uh, obviously has a sizable lead as the Cup returns to China with the final two race weekends in Shanghai and Zhejiang. Is it all over already? Well, I think what we've seen this weekend is they're starting to close the gap. OK, Alessio won his third race, but really the experience the drivers are having now with the car, with the new tyre and the teams, they're getting closer and they're starting to bridge that gap. Well, we'll see you all soon back in China.